Hey. Ooh. It's mysterious. I'm mysterious today. Mysterious, a little sinister. Yeah. Hey, something's going on. You don't know. Yeah. Episode Ooh. 49 of Out Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. Analyze his lyrics. That's what we do. Look for clues. And the buried treasure. And then, yeah. And then the other thing we are is wickedly judgmental of Alex, of uh, Billy Joel. <laughs> That's <what we're> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, he would want that. Yeah. So here's the funny thing about the song that we picked this week. Right. I more or less don't like the song. Um, Say what it is again. It is uh, My Baby Grand. Oh, yeah. But. I listened to it and I was like, oh, maybe I like this better than I thought, or I dislike it less than I thought, or something. Some 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 combination of that. Yeah. Better than I, I thought it was. I like the song better than the idea for it. Oh, okay. So you enjoy listening to the song, but also the nice to be done like uh, I'm gonna write a Ray Charles song, is yeah. what he did. And then you're like, oh, yeah, this is a pretty good Ray Charles song. Great. So give it to him or sing it yourself. <laughs> but the splitting it, um, you're just doing a bad impression of Ray Charles <laughs> to his face. Yeah, but but he can't see it, so. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But, you know, other senses get stronger. Well, that's true. He can smell it. He gets to smell the hell out of it. Um, so here's what I did. Song stinks. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I did in looking. So I watched the official Billy Joel video for this song. Um, and, I, and it's him and Ray Charles. And it's not what well, it's like a lot of his videos. His later videos are, are wise choice videos that they're not big. They're not big productions like they used to be. Well, that I guess that's over with anyway. People don't make uh, little movies anymore. <laughs> it's kind. Of, I think they still do, and they put them on YouTube, and yeah. uh, they don't tell us because we're old. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, the new system. <laughs> yeah, because uh, well, yeah, I've and you know, I've seen a couple of them, but I think a lot of the videos end up just being some version of a performance video. Yeah, and then some sort of dance piece. Yeah, and this video is just him and Ray Charles recording the song. That's the video. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, at the end of it, they go, I think that's the take. And Billy Joel, and I wonder if he says this every time a song is done, because Ray Charles says something like, oh, that's a good one or whatever. And Billy Joel says something like, soup's on. <laughs> And I wonder if he does that every time. Huh. That would be just lame enough that yeah. I would believe. And he says it a couple times to make sure people heard him. <laughs> oh, God. Because, you know, there's a cacophony. Oh, catch. I'm doing my catchphrase, you guys. Yeah. There's this cacophony of sound. So he's like, oh, wow, well, I hope they heard that soup thing I just said. And <laughs> <laughs> so he says, soup's on. And I watched the video and Watching the video is interesting because he's got the big cans on his head, and mm -hmm. and this is Billy Joel. He's being real soulful, real soulful. <laughs> that part's pretty funny, but the Ray Charles part's interesting because being a blind fella, I imagine he's not terribly aware of what how he projects himself physically into the world. Yeah, I imagine that's difficult. He, he did it with great dignity, but I'm just sure that there's things he does that if you were sighted, you'd be a little self-conscious. And what was interesting is when they were singing, because this is how you do it, they sang separate from playing, you know, because you're, you're oh, yeah. right, but right. he was sitting and I'll stand up a little bit. He was sitting at a stand. No, he was standing at a podium singing. He didn't have the cans on. Hmm. But what he did is he had a little poet, and as he was singing, he was doing this on <laughs> nothing, on nothing. He would, but it's probably the way he feels the most comfortable singing is while playing piano. So yeah, you so on the table he was playing an imaginary piano, which I thought was really cool. That's really cool. 
Yeah, right. And he probably recorded most of the stuff he recorded, not separately. He probably was playing at the same time. I'm sure, yeah. We're speculating, but it seems likely. Oh yeah, because a lot of the a lot of the old the older recordings, you just record a person doing the thing, and then you were like, "Did we get it? Oh, we got it. Good, we're done." Because there wasn't right that, especially pre stereo, pre stereo. Who cares? Because you were just recording it to come out right. of one little channel. Like, this isn't going to sound that great anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is like when they remaster stuff and they make faux stereo and it sometimes turns out and it sometimes doesn't. Because you <laughs> anyway, it was kind of interesting. And I'll link to that at the end. And then I listened to the song. It's got a proper ending. We love it. We love a proper ending. <laughs> I think we've all agreed in music. It's the most important thing. <laughs> well, I think he says in the song, uh, they're not going to play this on the radio. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. As well, give it an ending. Yeah. By the way, you're right. It does sound like a, a Ray Charles song. It sounds so much like a Ray Charles song that already exists. That yeah, likely. That you're like, is this a little bit of Georgia? Because it's a little bit of Georgia. It's a little bit of Georgia for sure. Yeah. 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 I'm sure the jumping off point. Yeah. It's 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 not even just that he tried to sound like a Ray Charles song. It's like. Oh, I got to change this enough not to get sued by whoever owns this particular song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but what made me like it a little bit more is it seems pretty clear that Ray Charles likes it. I was like, yeah, well, he had fun doing it. And yeah, I don't doubt it. And did, uh, he'd be honored. Yeah. And, flattered. and did you know that it was Ray Charles who inducted Billy Joel into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I did not know that, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I wonder if you get to request who you want to do it for you. I wonder. Or there's some sort of deal worked out. Uh, Otherwise, they would just throw someone at you and you'd be like, oh, Beck. <laughs> yep. Uh, hi. Um, I don't know. He seemed surprised or delighted. Um, he said, um, and he at the beginning, he said, I was, that was Mount Rushmore. I was inducted by Mount Rushmore, he said, uh, which is very sweet. Oh, uh, you froze up for a long time oh, there. Uh, he said, I was inducted by Mount Rushmore, he said. Uh, <laughs> That's weird, because he also said at some point that meeting Ray Charles was like meeting the Statue of Liberty. I think he, maybe he just thinks Ray Charles is really big. <laughs> Or, or he's trying to trick Ray Charles into thinking he's really big because he's blind. So, oh, yeah. So it's a gag. <laughs> it's a prank. Uh, I think artists, yeah, they'd like to do little pranks on each other <laughs> in the studio. But Ray Charles was very effusive about um, how much he likes Billy Joel. And it was very interesting. And yeah. Billy Joel, one of the things he said, and I'll I, and I'll link to this, but I'll just want to share this part. He said, I have been called derivative, he said. <laughs> and, and he said, you know what? I am derivative as all hell. But if they didn't induct any derivative artists into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, there would be no white people here. Ah, oh, nice. Good for him. Yeah. And he said, when I was a kid, I didn't know a lot of black people. And he said, and I found out later, it was because where I lived, they wouldn't sell them homes. True. And he said, so the only way we learned about soul and a different part of life was on the radio. Nice. It yeah, was where, where he grew up was the first a uh, planned suburb in the U.S. Yep, and, and it, they definitely did not sell homes to black people. And it and it and it correctly offends him that that's true, which is great. Fantastic. And what a great line! If they didn't let people in who are derivative, there'd be no white people. And he's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's it's right. great that he didn't make any exceptions. Yeah. So like, oh, uh, but David Bowie, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's. I mean, there's no rock and roll. Yeah. They're just 
there just isn't any goes and this is and he talked about rock rock and roll and then he made the point of saying and i'm not talking about pat boone <laughs> shot at pat boone <laughs> frankie avalon he hates all those guys i guess <laughs> the crooners yeah it was funny because it's 1990 billy joel so he's still an old man and you forget how long he's been an old man yeah but he's, he's not he's old but he's not as old a man. So then he's at that point, he looks a little bit like you or I. Yeah. Uh, heavier. I was say he's about 50, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's and he he's got his he's done the thing of of getting rid of no more no more long hair. It's trimmed down and the beard is under control, but he still has the beard. I yeah. think beardless now, right? Yeah, uh, I think goatee now. Yeah. Yeah. Fat he's got the fat guy goatee. <laughs> fat guy goatee <laughs> create the illusion of a chin i think there's only a few old men who go beard like letterman is leaned in hard on the beard. yes extremely hard which i love i'm surprised by it but god bless yeah and there's only one thing you can't do for 35 years then that's all you want to do <laughs> yeah it seems to me that what dave decided to do after he retired is he's thought I think my entire retirement is going to be me becoming comfortable with myself. Yeah, it's gotten a long way towards it. Since I never did that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had him on this week and he seemed awfully cozy. It was great. The, the whole interview was great. Yeah, he was perfect. And yeah. Just what we wanted from him. Just, uh, yeah, great stories. The Jack Hanna part was really cool amazing story yeah i uh, think dave's a little bit of a funny dick friend when he talks about jack when he says he doesn't know anything about animals i'm pretty sure he did but <laughs> that's great that was really funny I and mean, yeah. really, did you get to chat with him oh no no, no. he's very cordoned off oh that's too bad uh, i think he you know I used to think that was dicky, but I think it's more about him being uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm like, he's got to be here doing us a huge favor. Like, let's not bother him. Yeah. And he <laughs> was the only guest, right? He's the only guest. Yeah. And that's then, what you do if you uh, get Dave Oh, and on. the Counting Crows guy. Yeah. But if you have Dave on, you're not going to commercial, and that was it with Dave. Because right. No, no, no. You got him on the show. Squeeze out as much as you can. God, now we'll talk about Billy Joel in one second, but can I tell you one yeah, thing yeah, yeah. that bugs me about Dave? The only thing that bugs me. Yes. Is and and I know this bugged Norm McDonald, and I know this bugs a lot of people about him. Um, hey, your show was great. Stop it. Stop saying your show wasn't great. Yep. Or we didn't know what we were doing. I believe that he felt that way. Yeah. But it's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Yeah, the show was wonderful and you were wonderful on it. And was it the greatest show ever? I, I don't know, but it was great. It was great. I mean, it's. I think it's a host thing. Uh, certainly Conan had the same problem. Yeah. Although that show a lot of times was not great. Yeah. <laughs> it was just real stupid yeah which is fine that's all you needed i just wanted something stupid to be on tv for an hour at yeah that time of day. well and dave was a broadcaster and conan wasn't and then conan right. became one over time because you learn he learned the ropes but he wasn't he didn't come in already having been on tv as a weatherman and you know in the day show <laughs> right and people forget like game shows dave did game shows he right told this nightmare story once about doing a game show um, audition. It was the, a pilot for some game show. And to give you an idea what year it was, thin microphone game show. Okay. So it was a long time ago. And, and he, there was some celebrity on there and it was in typical fashion, the kind of celebrity you wouldn't be nervous to meet or even want to meet. It was a celebrity where you go, oh, I guess you're famous, that kind of celebrity. Your George Goebbels. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and, maybe, and maybe not even that good. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's doing the thing and he's being Dave and he's asking questions and there and the show's fine. And he said that the the celebrity said to him, he goes, you know, if this goes great, you could be doing this the rest of your life. <laughs> and his heart sunk. <laughs> he said, <laughs> oh God, no. And then yeah. it didn't get picked up and it was like, oh, okay. So I don't have to be doing that the rest of my life. It's so true that um, the wrong early success can fucking ruin your life. Yeah, I think uh, that, yeah. You like, get tagged with the game show guy tag. You know who had the wrong early success? Polly Shore. <laughs> He's not so? a bad comic. Okay. Now. Oh. No. Now. I'm trusting you. Yeah. So now he's not a bad comic. I don't know if he's a great comic, but he's definitely, or I'll say it a different way. Now he's a comic. <laughs> right. Then he had like one character. Yeah, he had the that famous. Yeah, weasel horse shit. And yeah. now I'm sure he enjoyed the money and the fame at the time and all of the objectively all of the young sex he had at that time in his life. <laughs> I'm, and he may have no regrets specifically because of that part because uh, i opened i opened for him when he was young and popular yeah you remember that oh sure um and uh in a good mood the ladies just the ladies in the audience i was very taken aback by all of that i was like what is it you all right well good for you you famous because you guys are all gonna go have sex Oh, good for you. <laughs> and how'd you make out that night? I believe I went to Denny's. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, a different kind of win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but my God. Yeah, the weasel. Yeah. Oh, God. It just... Yeah, no good. People loved them, and then they didn't. But then now you deal with... Oh, but now I'm funny. Now, look, I wrote jokes this time. Oh, oh well. Yeah, no one believes you. Yep, that's hard to climb out of that hole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I will not pity him. Yeah, no, he did fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so the song we picked today is oh. My Baby Grand, and I picked it following your lead, having picked Shameless, a song right. made with somebody else. And I'm going to just quickly say that I think the title of the song is Baby Grand. It's Baby Grand. There's definitely a my in the lyrics. Yeah, it's Baby Grand, yeah. Just for clarity. So you don't think we're talking about the, the different. Yeah. People will be frantically searching for a song that doesn't exist. Yeah, but it is by Billy Joel. That's true. And uh, and of course, it's he was... A podcast. <laughs> he was absolutely <laughs> beside himself that he got to work with Ray Charles and why wouldn't you be? How wonderful is that? And it starts out with sort of a dueling pianos thing. Um, yeah. And that part's pretty cool. It's actually, the video almost makes the song better. It's almost better to just listen to the song with the video because the, the video makes you love it only because you're watching two people very good at this specific thing across from each other you know, and it's very, not a lot of cuts, but shots of hands, and it's neat seeing, <laughs> it's neat seeing that part. Yeah, that's always good. I'd like that when you're at the concert, and they do have a camera on the keyboard, and it'll show you some of the work. You're like, yeah. oh, that is <laughs> gross oversimplification, but you uh, are like, oh, that's really hard to do. Yep. And he's singing at the same time. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little yeah. bit like magic. You forget. You can, it's easy to forget, I think, when you're listening to music, how fucking hard it is to do. Yeah. How, every part of it's hard. Every, every part, part is hard. It, I can't do it. No. And that proves it's difficult because you're good at a lot of yeah. stuff. I can only, I can do all easy things. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a unique skill. You can do all of the easy things, which I tell you, that's kind of hard to do. That's a lot of things. Yeah. Not yeah. everybody can do all the easy things. You do all of them. It's the 
the hardest thing is scheduling everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you make a sandwich. I'll make a sandwich. I'll feed some birds. <laughs> I went for a walk. You did that? Yeah, put a hat on. I was going to say the hat. You put the hat on. The hat on. Not everyone can do that. It was uh, hard to get to. It was on a hook with a sweater. Yeah. The sweater was <laughs> over the hat. Let's see. That's difficult. You put your glasses on a nightstand. You can do that. Yep. The, uh, taking, taking them off the uh, nightstand in the morning. That's hard. Hard. That's harder for Not sure. Hard that. <laughs> Not. <laughs> a lot of glasses that you way. Play the piano. I could not do. No. I tried. Did you? I took, I took 101 in uh, at the U of A, and uh, I was able to like memorize the stuff. You know, like this. Yeah. This key makes this note. Yeah. Okay, got it. And this other key makes this other note. And now play them together. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, now this is hard now. Yeah, it's it's difficult to make your body do those things. It's a bummer. It's a real <laughs> bummer because we had we had a piano in the house when I was a kid, and uh, I would play on it. Yeah. But. So you got yelled at. No, I never got yelled at for that. There's plenty to yell at me for, though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think there were so many other things that they were like, okay, well, this is fine. But I would play, and and uh, I liked making garbage notes because my hands looked right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I, I've had a dream once where I was able to get on stage and fake people with the garbage notes. Oh, yeah. And I, woke, I had that dream. And when I woke up for about a half hour, because I was still kind of, I was like, Josh, can I do that? Can <laughs> I just get up and go like this? And people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I just, I had the same thing with the guitar. <laughs> like, oh, I, I'm figuring it out. Great. Oh, this is good. Oh, it'd be so great if you were, you believed it long enough that you booked a show. <laughs> Like, oh no, this is not working. Oh no. Oh, no, what? I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> In my dream, it worked. And people are just, and then the people, it's kind of their fault. Why did they buy tickets? What did they think this show? Right. How did you advertise that show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dream Artist, that was the name of your album. It was a terrible <laughs> album. You recorded a whole album? Yeah. No well, offense, but it's not good, Alex. It's a bad yeah. album. You'd thanks, engineer. Just <laughs> record the thing. Just play the drum track. That's why didn't somebody tell me? <laughs> <laughs> so they play the piano and it's very pretty. And uh it goes back and forth. And the trading of lyrics. Oh, and by the way, there's not a lot of Hey, that was good. And it wasn't a, there's not a lot of that talking nonsense. There's a little bit. There's a little bit, and it's fine. It is. Now, in the video, I will say there's a talky part, and Billy Joel seems surprised because it's Ray says something. Ah. Clearly not part of the lyrics, it's just him saying something. And right. so Billy participates, and it occurs to me, oh yeah, Billy Joel's not the guy who improvises he likes things to be exactly the way they are right like and his women he wants them to be just the way they are um but he goes uh -huh. along with it but he's smart enough or certainly well aware and he doesn't over the top go blues singer yeah i think he's aware that too much borders on hey now this is racist <laughs> right. he knows that yeah. which is great yeah i can i'll sing like a black guy but if there's a talkie part i'm still from long island <laughs> yep because okay otherwise, otherwise it's gross released okay. in 1986 off the bridge uh here we go late at night when it's dark and cold i reach out for someone to hold when i'm blue when i'm lonely she comes through. She's the only one who can. My baby grand is all I need. It's good. It's weird, though. <laughs> it's weird. You don't hold a baby grand. 
Uh, no. Like you could be held up by one, I guess. You could sit on one. Pass out on it. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. If you were writing a song about Lucille, the guitar, this would fit more, right? Yeah. It's, I was going to say, it's like a long tradition of songs about your instrument. Yeah. And probably guitar is winning. Yeah. In terms of most songs. Yeah. And saxophone would be weird. Reach out for my saxophone. Also, it'd be a weird song because it'd be all saxophone. <laughs> you, can't, you can't sing and play <laughs> Or you could, but that would sound super weird. That's a novelty song if, at best. A kazoo you could pull that off with? <laughs> Let's can we write that? My kazoo. My kazoo. I reach out. A very forlorn song about, you know, but the one thing that's always come through for me is my kazoo. <laughs> Played it, well, you know. I think we don't change any other lyrics. Yeah, I was gonna say when I'm sad, I don't know what to do. Because then anyway, <laughs> later, on, later on you bring it. Um, and also reach, you know, in the dark reaching out. Well. Be careful because you're going to stub your toe. It's a piano. Yeah. I mean, I feel like he's trying to pull a little trick where we're supposed to think he's going to say something about a lady. Yeah. And he's like, oh, oh, the piano. Oh. He's getting <laughs> all the emotional nourishment he needs from the piano. Yeah. And he won't yell at the piano about having a job. Oh. That's and the nice. piano is easy to control. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah but it's good and so now that lyric i believe billy joel sings that lyric and this next one that you're gonna do and this is nice because you, you'll be ray charles oh i should i do it as ray charles no probably not <laughs> in my time i've wandered everywhere around this world she would always be there any day any hour all it takes is the power in my hands. This baby grand's been good to me. Yeah. It's, the lyric I like is, is the power in my hands. That's a nice yeah. lyric. And it particularly giving it to Ray Charles and not yourself was, was great. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, I like... The idea that it's the, the constant companion yeah. where I go. I can't, you know, can't count on anything else being right or present. Bye. She's going for a walk. That was can't count on anything being right or present. And she leaves. And my woman walks out on me. That's a perfect producer. That was a great moment. But, uh, at least I still got my laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, all it takes is the power in my hands and to be charged every six hours. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the image. It is sort of like the cowboy singing about his horse. Yeah. Kind oh, of yeah. Tradition. Yeah. But everything's against me, but I got old paint. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's not complicated what's happening in the song. And I do like, the, and again, not necessarily the most original, but I do like that part of the song is just uh, almost a thank you letter to the piano itself. The yeah. brand's been good to me. Right. And it certainly has. It made both of them famous and rich. And uh, yeah, and, uh, they had something to do with it, but but that that thing and then man i bet because i feel this way about comedy you know i feel i definitely feel oh there'll be days when i'm beat to hell and when i manage to get on stage in front of a crowd it fixes a lot of things for a little while sure and then they get bad again but for a little while yeah it's a nice uh, treatment yeah I'm going for a little treatment yeah but it is uh, more um esoteric in that like you wouldn't i don't know if you sing a song like this about the mic right <laughs> over the stage it's a little more scattered in terms of what your tools are 
what I would say is, is I would, you, I would, if you, if I was going to sing a song about it, and first of all, then I've, I've gone insane if I did that part. Um, but I think it'd be about the jokes themselves. Is there any? Yeah, that's probably true. It's not going to be about the notebook. <laughs> <laughs> My moleskin has been My good. To yeah. By the way, that. a lot of new comics are are iPhone comics. Oh yeah. I can't do it. I saw John Stewart do some stand up off of his iPhone. Speaking of fresh new voices. <laughs> It's very weird. Yeah, John Stewart, who's came out, coming out on the side of uh, "Don't Stop Being on Spotify," which is fine. That's a fine position to take. That's okay, an, it's an opinion. Yeah, I uh, I was I was interested in the conversation for all of one day, and then I was like, ah, whatever, you guys do. Yeah, I uh, stayed tuned long enough to get a tweet, and then I was like, okay. <laughs> Now I don't care what happens to you. Yeah. Um, uh, this next set of lyrics gets a little sad, and which I kind of like. Uh, I've had friends, but they have slipped away. That's a bummer. Yeah. I've had fame, but it doesn't stay. That's not a good line, because that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It, For both of I you. Mean, with Billy Joel, it probably ebbed and flowed a little more than Ray Charles. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I guess. But no. by, by this, you're in the 80s and you've had so many. Yeah, yeah. You're fine. Yeah. People are even interested in your drunk driving. They just, you're, you're fine. I've had fame, but it doesn't stay. I've had fortunes, spent them fast enough. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now here, this, by the way, is where he gets very bluesy, man, is I've had fortunes, spent them fast enough. Yeah. Uh, as for women, they don't last with just one man. Uh, again, it's all their fault. <laughs> it's, all, it's all their fault. Very likely. Because because just the line, they don't don't last with just one man. I'm like, oh, okay, so so now you're just saying all the women cheated or they uh, come on. Yeah, I might refer you back to the previous verse where you wandered everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um stay home sometimes yeah it's you know it's built and in, baked into the job i guess but yeah but baby grand will stand by me i do I, like that the word piano i don't think shows up in the song oh that's true we just take the shorthand yeah the baby next lyric, the next lyric you get to read does a thing that happens in a lot of different songs and i <laughs> like it every time a good little bridge and it's always i for me a bridge is always welcome in a blues song because mm -hmm. they get real repetitive yeah so it's nice when uh, we change some melodic stuff yeah um and i'm gonna say one trivia thing before i read this that i remembered do you I feel like it was omni magazine but i might be wrong it was one of those smart guy magazines <laughs> and they used to have a little blurb that was like the bottom third of one page where they talked about slang from different occupations and it would usually be a list of five slang terms that are used in like the music business okay. or and one time it was moving companies and do you know the slang term for a baby grand piano it for a moving company yeah um they, you know those uh blankets they put on everything they call them skins is what i learned maybe. packing the truck with uh with as little wasted space as possible they call tessellation oh according to this article from 30 years ago so i'm gonna say that a baby grand is called a uh, uh back breaker <laughs> <laughs> you're not too far off it's a blackjack oh don't know why hmm. i guess they're usually black or brown yeah i yeah. think almost universally black if it's a baby brand specifically right i think so that's been my experience i think i think only those upright pianos are sometimes brown is there a thing where uh, this is the piano for blues people 
Whereas like a grand piano, I guess you would not play blues on. That's more of a classical. Yeah, um, I guess. I don't, I don't know enough about pianos. So a baby grand, if if you've ever, I there was a club Mary Joe would work at that had a baby grand. Uh -huh. And the owner was very clear. Anyone who's not the piano player is not to touch this thing. Sure. Because they can go out of tune pretty easily. And right. then once they do, you got to have a guy come out. Yeah. Do it. And because it's not like the piano player can do it like a guitar player can. Right. But it's the same idea. There's, you know, there's strings in it. So I think blues players probably were mostly upright pianos because those are a lot cheaper. And then right. the successful blues um, singer. And how many of those were there ever, really? You know, you know <laughs> not a ton. You know, I mean, the, in fact, some of them were successful only by redefining success. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, some of those guys would end up on a baby grand, I'm sure. It's like why my my buddy Walker, he's a prof he was not anymore because his back's garbage and he's an older man now, but he used to play semi pro hockey. Yeah. And uh, very good player. He was he would he said I was good. I was mostly an enforcer. <laughs> Um, but we were talking about the, the, just the fact that there just aren't a lot of black players in the NHL. And okay. he, he said, well, so it's not racism per se, but there are economic barriers to playing that game Ah, because there's well, much equipment. Yeah. Well, what caused those economic barriers? Exactly. That was his <laughs> point. That was his point. His point yeah. was. It's not, it's not like players being racist or teams being, it's a systemic problem. Yeah. Um, so similar to why you'd see, uh, you know, playing basketball is a, it's a great game. Also, it's almost free to learn. Yeah. There are existing courts where you live. You can buy a hoop and put it up in your garage. Yeah. You're ready. So I, I would imagine that the- Way more people are good at guitar than piano. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And, uh, and, and, the, and your dumb friend isn't going to lug a piano to try to pick up girls at your party. <laughs> no, but if you have one there already. Yeah, oh, he's... It'll work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they yeah. Say, uh, oh, sorry, I was going in. Go ahead. They say no one's going to play this on the radio. They said the melancholy blues were dead and gone, but only songs like these played in minor keys keep those memories holding on. I, I do like, like the little self-referential played in minor keys. I was going to say that is something I always like in a song is, is that, is yeah. the reference to the key signature is kind of neat, I think. I like that. And there was a, a Daryl Hall solo song <laughs> called 4-4 uh, four, four Time. Oh. I really liked. I was like, that's getting even more technical. <laughs> and then I had to look up whether the song itself was in 4-4 four, four Time. And I think it wasn't, which stinks. Unless but I double check that. Unless that was the point. Unless that was the point, but that I might be ascribing too much planning. Yeah. Um, maybe I will double check. Maybe it wasn't four four time. Look, I don't know, man. <laughs> Definitely in a minor key. Played in minor keys. They say that no one's going to play this on the radio. Yeah, that that's funny because I wonder if anybody actually said that. I don't. I think bet so. before this. Yeah. It was probably said to both of them, like, hey, man, nobody wants blues on the radio. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which is kind of true. And there are definitely blues stations, but they probably don't do nearly as well as your top 40s. Yeah, you and need now, to. I mean, it, at this time, there probably was bluesy stuff on the radio. Yeah. I think now there's nothing anywhere near the top 40. Yeah, true. 
because um, would you consider anything from like Adele's not bluesy, right? Just sad. Some of her songs, I think, have blues elements. I think like some of the, like Timberlake stuff. Yeah. But it's always like a borrowed element. It's never a full blues song. That's what I was going to say is like you, you hear the blues in the sense that you hear the fingerprints of it. Yeah. You're the influence, but you're not going to hear just a, a whole a whole song. I feel like it was George Thorogood <laughs> was maybe like the last time. Yeah. <laughs> it, it had to be like a white artist deciding yeah. that he had discovered this cool old thing. Yeah. <laughs> we all need to hear it from um, him. Was George Thorogood bad to the bone? Is that he bad to the bone? He was bad that, to the bone. That's my karaoke go to now. Right. <laughs> and but I do it the same way every time now because I find found it so funny. And this is how how I dumb I am. I was in my car and I was doing this in my car and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this at karaoke. So I made plans. Oh good. Because I just found it really funny. So the way I do it now is I get on the mic and I go, from the day I was born, the nurses all gathered round. They stared in wide wonder, and I do it that way the whole it's time. Like a spoken word. Yep, I do it the whole way. They said, "Leave this one alone." And bad to the bone. <laughs> Great. And uh, sometimes people enjoy it. Sometimes they don't. Mostly, it's like every time, no one's listening. Yeah, that's the great thing. It's the great life lesson from karaoke. Yep. You get up there and you're super nervous. And you're either going to land this or blow it. And it turns out nobody is looking. Yep. They're waiting for their turn. Yep. Everyone's heads down in that giant book of songs. Yep. <laughs> oh, I can't sing this. Oh, I think I can see this. Sing this, writes it down. Oh, turns out I was wrong. Can't sing that. Yep. Every song's too high. <laughs> I've come far from the life I've strayed in. Huh? I liked, by the way, because I thought it was, when I heard it, I thought he said stayed in, which is <laughs> a fine word too, but strayed in is pretty good. Yeah. I've got scars from those dives I've played in. I bet they both do. Yep. Now I'm home and I'm weary in my bones. Every dreary one night stand. Now, do you think every dreary one night stand at this point is just referring to gigs that aren't great yes i think so too that now I think, yes i think it's gig based yeah but um, baby grand came home with me yeah that's um which by I the way like it, it stayed in the club and you came home and you have a different baby grand in your house i was gonna say that probably i don't know yeah Maybe you're big time like these guys you didn't have the piano two, around two roadies looking at the piano going i gotta take that to your house now i don't want to no i don't want to do that i'm too stoned how we're two guys how are you carrying a fucking baby grand <laughs> that's heavy yeah no, it's, I, like, I, it's I, more like the idea of yeah. baby grandness yeah <laughs> I, I, think, I think you're right. The baby grand was also at my house. It's a different one. <laughs> and this one, they're trading lines back and forth, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I've come far from the life I've strayed in. And then I think Ray saying, I've got scars from those dives I've played in. And I think uh, Billy is weary in his bones, which is maybe <laughs> than the other guy. Because weary in my bones is, man, that's an old timey bluesy thing to say. Yeah, it really is. And then dreary is kind of like, uh, this rhymes. Yep. <laughs> not the right word. And not a word that pops up in a lot of blues songs. Yeah. It's very British. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, the sentence I've come far from the life I've strayed in is confusing to me. You're right. It should be with the life I've strayed in, right? Or I, is he, 
did he come far from a previous life and in that previous life he strayed within it yeah did he stray into a previous life <laughs> it's a little messy in that very billy joel way where it's like it's gotta fit yeah <laughs> Uh, you're right because it doesn't enough. you're right it doesn't entirely follow logically it sounds it all sounds pretty by the way if you're listening to this podcast now it's i recommend checking the song out because i if you're not a big billy joel f- fan i guarantee you haven't heard the song because <laughs> it didn't do much yeah it it existed and I don't think it charted. If it did, it was super brief. Yeah. And you know what? If it if it did chart, great, because it's as good as most things. It's just not, it's mm-hmm. just not amazing. That's all. The only thing is it's not amazing. This is not a bad song. There's a lot, there's a lot to enjoy about it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and just Ray Charles' voice. Yeah. It really is. He did write a really perfect song for Ray Charles to sing. And, and then decided he would also sing it, which is fine. Yep. What a delightful thing, too, to have happen for a fella. Because Ray Charles was definitely, along with the Beatles and any number of other artists, a reason he wanted to do it. And this album, he did like several duets. And like the Ray Charles one makes sense, and the other two don't make any sense to me. There was one with Cindy Lauper. Just like, okay, I'm sure they're like New York buddies. Yeah. But it was weird. And she was, doesn't, she's singing mostly background in it. I was gonna bring up Cindy Lauper, funnily enough. <laughs> and the reason I was gonna bring her up is so in this song. It's funny, and duets in general are weird yeah. because duets are two artists who don't work together regularly. Right. Usually of equal stature. Usually of equal stature, yeah. But the part that is always jarring is the don't work together often. Like Hollow Notes work well together in their songs because they're they did that. They made a they yes. got good at doing that. They were a duo. And so sometimes when you're seeing seeing uh two very brilliant artists who are well known sing together, sometimes part of what you're seeing is what you would have never seen with Hollow Notes, which is the beginning of them figuring out how to sing together. Yes. Which can be interesting. Yeah, but sometimes not. So that's where you get that weird talky thing where where they're trying too hard. And to Billy (laughs) Joel's credit, they don't he doesn't do that. He doesn't go, You're so right, Ray, or any of that. (laughs) Um, and a lot of times what I think what you get with the duet is uh two different songs. Yeah. One person is like, I think this is what this song is. And the other person will go, oh, no, it's this. It's rock and roll. Yeah. It's not pruning. Yeah. Cindy Lauper did a duet with um, Tony Bennett. Oh, boy. And the song they did it was, is a uh, version of Make It Whoopi. <laughs> Great. And it's not terrible, but it's also not, they're not really entirely in sync. And it's exactly that problem that you just uh, illustrated, which was, or I'm illustrating it. You explained it. Um, it's they are singing two different songs. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you can't enjoy either of them, really. No. Yeah, yeah it's fine. I, you grew up listening to a lot of country music, and it's a much bigger phenomenon over there, the duet. Oh, yeah. Like entire albums, George and Tammy. Um, I like the stream. Seem to have a better handle on how it's supposed to work. <laughs> I don't know if that sometimes you'd be like two different songs, but they're both kind of great and they go well together. Um, I guess Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton did more than one. Yeah. 
Do you think uh, it's because they're more locked into the genre? I think maybe the genre is more locked. That's what I mean, yeah. Or options. <laughs> yeah. As to what to do with it. Yeah, because yeah. cause in rock and roll, you know, rock and roll cribs from so many other places for it to just exist, including country. Yes, very much so. Um, a lot of what it is with country is that the topics lend themselves to a man and a woman talking back and forth. Yeah. Whereas this one is like just two guys who play the same instrument. Right. Um, kind of talking about how great it is. Uh, and the Cindy Lauper song, it's like kind of about a relationship, but not really. And it's not like he's singing the man part of the relationship and she's singing the woman part. Yeah. They're both expounding on the same topic. Yeah, they're training um, lyrics in a song that was written for one person to sing. Yeah. Whereas like with Johnny Cash, it was like, I'm going to Jackson. Yeah. And then she said, well, go ahead and go to Jackson. <laughs> I okay. love my favorite. That's my favorite song of Johnny Cash, by the way. It's fantastic. That's such a hilarious song. It's a, for so many reasons. Yeah. Well, this idea that it's a great big deal to go to fucking Jackson. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's great. Where are you that going to Jackson is a yeah. improvement or like a fun weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and I also like when she goes, I'll be dancing on a pony keg. Like, <laughs> yeah, you right. dumb hillbilly drunks. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. I will I'll get also thrown out of the keg store. I'll also drink too much. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. There is one more lyric for you to read, by the way. Oh, yeah, there's a little guy. Yeah. Uh, ever since this gig began, my baby grand's been good to me. I like this, the idea that it's all one gig. Yeah, I do too. Ever since this one, my whole career is a gig. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it's a good sentiment. It's it's tidy. I'll say that about the song. It's very tidy. It's very tidy. Um, I, it, that last part made me think of New York State of Mind, another full blues song. Yeah. Because um, it does do that. Like, this is the end of the song now, so I'm going to drag out all the notes really long, and then it ends. Yep. And New York State of Mind, of course. Great song. That's my karaoke song. Yeah, so there's a, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that song. We will find out. My birthday is coming up. We're going to do karaoke. We're going to take our chances with the Coco and uh, book a room. Oh, fantastic. But before that, we're going to Turks and Caicos on the 13th. So scheduling wise, we might have to talk. Yeah, no worries. We'll figure it out or we'll take a figure week. Figure it out. I'm sorry, not the point. Or we'll take a week off. It works fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's a, a nice little song. Yeah. I think it's, did he do, I guess Piano Man is sort of a tribute to his instrument, but it was more about <laughs> I'm in a bar with assholes in it. I feel like Piano Man is more a tribute to himself and a part of it, a very specific slice of his life. Yeah, I'm a, I'm this character. Yeah. The Richard Scarry storybook of jobs you can have. Yeah, it's yeah, it's less about and it's it's even just feels less about the music and rather it's about how you have to get, the way in which you squeeze money out <laughs> of doing it. Right. Which is pretty bread. Good. Yeah, bread. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I like the song. I really do. I like it better than I thought I did. I do too. Um, it's not complex lyrically, but thank God. Yeah. It shouldn't be for a blues song, can't do that. Yeah. And it feels kind of like now thinking about it in terms of after having watched Ray Charles induct him into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and watching a speech, I'm like, this is more a love letter to his inspiration rather than a just stealing or anything it's more like yeah like a way to say you know this is you know this is why i'm even bothering to try 
yeah because of these amazing artists so i think that part's really cool actually when he was inducted by ray charles that was after this song i assume yeah you know what it must have been because it was 1990 yep this is a yeah. yeah great it's because it is sort of the song embodies that spirit of like we're all stealing from you black people. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is my way of saying thanks for all the stuff we stole. Yeah, thank you and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll cut you in on the least profitable song from this album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like, yeah, what Ray when he did the induction was weathered, man. It was I was like I don't remember how soon after word words he passed. I can't remember when he passed, but was definitely an older fella but he was still there you know he was still very present yeah very sharp yeah um i'm thinking of the song can you think of the song where he stole just stole from ray charles oh funny um years before this uh there is one where he did on the yelling the ray charles yelling was it uh Hit the road, Eric. <laughs> it was Fifty uh, Second Street. Oh, okay. The titular track. Yeah. Okay. Very cartoony Ray Charles impression. <laughs> so, I doubt that anyone spoke to him about it. Yeah. Maybe it was a, a lesson learned somewhere along the line. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, you know, we are not sponsored by Vitamin Water. No, <laughs> the world spoke to him by not particularly caring for the tune. Yeah, no, that was not one of the non-hits. Yeah, which is funny to have that be a lot of hits. Yeah, funny to have the title track be the problematic song of an album that did fine. Yeah, that's pretty great. I wonder how often that happens. Oh boy. I bet not very often, and it's very typically Billy Joel. This occurs to me that this is something that would kind of only happen to Billy Joel because <laughs> other artists you talk about what's going to be the signature song and the name yeah. of the album and the whatever yeah. often the first song released and the biggest hit yeah that's what that's how it got named or whatever let it be for example as an you know that's let's, let's run through Billy Joel Cold Spring Harbor not a song title no mentioned in a song yeah that did okay piano man that, yep. it. street life serenade no yeah. is a track on the album but not a hit not a hit at all yeah. turnstiles not a song not a song the stranger great song. moderate hit i think that yeah great song i don't but think also it's a great song regardless even if it didn't work, at least you're we're aware it's a great song, so fine. Yeah. Um, uh, where are we? Stranger, 52nd Street, we okay. talked about. Glass Houses, not a song. Song. <laughs> what was after Glass Houses? You're going to be better at this, so I'm not good. Talks at this. in the Attic, not real. Yeah. Uh, boop, boop, boop. I think the bridge was 83. Yeah. No song called The Bridge. An Innocent Man is somewhere in there. Oh, An Innocent Man, sorry. After Glass Houses. This is An Innocent Man. It's a man. Lovely song. Don't think it did super well. Yeah. And not maybe a little problematic because absolutely you were multi divorced by then. Yeah. And not my favorite <laughs> song on that album by any stretch. No. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Stormfront. Stormfront, which is, is it, is there a song called Stormfront? There is a song called Stormfront. It's not great. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Not too well. Uh, and uh, the River of Dreams, fine. Yeah. Well, that's the signature song from that album. I had them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because then, then you're, at the very least, you don't always have the best judgment about what your best songs are, but isn't that going to be true of the kind of artist he is? Because yeah. he doesn't take a lot of um, contribution from other people. That's not what he does. I also think if you 
somehow went in blank and he handed you, someone handed you the stranger. You might not be able to figure out what would be a hit <laughs> and what would not be a hit. That's true. Um, ahead of time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I would have thought the stranger would have done better as a song. Yeah. It's got that whistling. Yeah, it's a beautiful it's like whistling in it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe really it out of its time? Yeah. Oh yeah, nobody knew how to whistle. Yeah, that was before whistling. So <laughs> we're frightened by the song. That's right. We didn't what know what's happening. Is that machinery? Oh what is this black magic? Oh, will this yeah. sound, will this sound hurt me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good song. Do you have any trivia for me? Um, I do. All right. I don't remember it. <laughs> That's good. Um, at the end of the song, Where's the Orchestra? You're familiar with the song? Uh huh. At the very end, there's a little sort of a piccolo or a flute that plays the melody from a different Billy Joel song. Do you know what song that is? I like that trick. That I think everybody, everybody who does that, I think is because they like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um sting did that too he did uh he in, oh uh, yeah he did every every breath you take appears in um in the the of the senses, you're the queen of all you survey oh, na, 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 na. <laughs> there is a deeper wave than this rising in deeper wave mm -hmm. uh, in the end of it he goes every breath you take Every cake you bake. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Every leg <lake> you break. <laughs> Great. And that's one of the better versions of doing that because it's also funny and silly. Yeah. Also making funnier. Yeah. The self. Feels very much like a British thing to do. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I'm just going to guess that it's um, just the way you are. <laughs> It's a good guess. It's Allentown. Oh. And um, I learned that this morning on the interwebs. And I listened to the song and I was like, how did I never register that? It's okay. so crystal clear. And it's not like a snippet. It's a lot of the song. <laughs> That's funny. Being played by, I couldn't tell you the instrument, but it was high pitched. So I wonder why he did that. I don't know. Because it doesn't necessarily fit the song, so it's more just like a little Easter egg kind of thing. I think it was like a little musical thing. Probably somebody did it in the studio and they thought it was funny. Yeah. I'm like, hey, it sounds like that. Yeah. That's okay. how they talk. <laughs> <laughs> the musician slang. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> uh, sound. Now. Now. Mysterious. I going. I don't know what film that is, but I do think that this is your tribute to the fact that Billy Joel starts a lot of songs with well. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to give you a funny hint now. Okay. You've, you've, that is Orson Welles, right? It is Orson Welles and a, um, the, the man. Yeah. The other one. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. Oh, well, she's very pretty. Um, you have said the name of this song multiple times already in the last couple minutes. <laughs> yes. It's just really funny. You've said it. Like, like, <laughs> you've said it at least five times. I know. I'm trying to remember now the lyric. There is something about it. Is there a grandfather clock? No, no, it's it's literally the title. You've okay. literally said Allentown? That. Huh? Allentown? No. Well, imagine what this mysterious movie could be called. Storm? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Second Street? Um, I've said a lot of song titles, I'm realizing. And um, Maybe the stranger. Oh, yeah, it's the stranger. Wow. Yeah, I was. What about that to movie say, is called? 
Yeah, this is the movie. The name of this movie is The Stranger. Wow. Oh. My next hint was just going to be, think of a Billy Joel song that you named that's the most film noir <laughs> Billy yeah. Joel song you've ever heard. Yeah. And you'd have, got, you'd have gotten it right away because it's The Stranger. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the photo of the band on the back of The Stranger is black and white. Yep. And they're all very serious looking. Yep. And what a cool photo, right? A very cool photo. I can't imagine for a minute what might be happening. Yeah. Maybe they're hiding from something. They're either hiding. He's like hugging the clock. I'm going to say they're either hiding or there's something inside the clock, like a hidden room, or just there's something inside the clock. Maybe Maybe chocolate. (laughs) Maybe chocolate, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> one of those uh clock covered chocolates a whole movie's about them trying to get chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and slowly going mad i assume i think they're all about slowly going mad yeah that whole era she's upset about something or she's nervous she's nervous a little tired she does seem tired seem tired maybe of his shenanigans he's like all right that ticking clock keeps me awake. All right, I'll turn the clock off. And then they go back to bed. No oh, chocolate. Come back to bed. <laughs> oh, great. I got to bed. <laughs> I was um, putzing around looking at Billy Joel stuff this morning. And I realized that there is one song that is named after you. Probably not how it happened. Maybe. But you share... Uh, first names with us. <laughs> I'm, I'm phrasing this really poorly. Your name is James. That is right. There's a song called James. And so we're going to talk about James. Unless we already have. I don't think we have. I feel like I would have remembered. Yeah. I think James would have. I'm always amazed when I... There was Lint. Um, I'm, always, I'm always amazed some when I look at the Billy Joel choices yeah, we have and I'm like, yeah, we still haven't talked about a number of prominent songs, which is good. Yeah. Because what we, does it have? 11 studio albums times 10 songs? We're not even halfway there. Yeah, there's still a hell of a lot to go and a lot of good songs. And now, granted, a lot of like garbage too, but there's a lot of good stuff. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, next week we will talk about James. Yeah. Uh, And I am James, and I will talk about it. I am Alex, and I will talk about James, the song, and the dude. And the dude. And and we will send a letter, or maybe uh, Bruno Mars can do this. Oh, yeah. To Billy Joel. Send him a letter. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, About how he he needs to write a song called Alex. Oh, I thought you were going to hit him up for uh, my kazoo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can handle that. Yeah, we'll do my kazoo. We'll do that. And who's the famous kazoo artist that we wrote it for that we always wanted to perform with? <laughs> Weird Al, maybe? Yeah, Weird Al. I'm sure. We, yeah, Weird Al has had kazoo on his albums. He definitely has. If anyone has. Uh, smells like uh, Nirvana has kazoo. Okay. Uh, man, I was ready with that trivia. We're a little too ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why everybody wanted to fuck Polly Shore. That's right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or maybe not why they wanted to fuck him, but definitely why they did not particularly want to fuck me. <laughs> well, I got to fuck one of these two guys. So I guess it's going to be this guy, not this, this guy weird who Al. Knows less weird Al trivia. <laughs> Uh, I've seen Weird Al in concerts a few times. Uh, only once for me, but it was great. Yeah, the last tour I can't. It was like called like the Pretentious Tour or something. I can't remember what they call. It. He called the tour, but the premise was he had an orchestra. Great. <laughs> and it was so great. Oh, that's brilliant. It was so. Don't do it again. But it was great. Yeah. All right, oh. everybody, uh, go see Weird Al. <laughs>